So I'm sure some of you saw the title of this video and wondered how the hell I could give one of the greatest science fiction novels, no stars. I gotta be crazy. What's up folks? This is your boy Darko. Welcome to another edition of Kindles and Kicks. Today I'm talking about Kindred by Octavia E. Butler, which I read with my boy Britton, AKA some Oki dude, which we will be discussing together on his channel very soon. So look out for that. Now, the book starts off with a young black woman. She just turned 26 years old, I believe. And her slightly older white husband, they just moved into a nice home in suburban California. And they are starting to get settled in, placing items where they need to go in their new house. When all of a sudden, inexplicably, the main character, Dana is suddenly transferred back in time 150 plus years to the early 1800s, where she finds herself on a plantation and not just any plantation, but the plantation owned by her white ancestors. Ain't that a and this doesn't just happen once, it happens several times. Each time she returns, things get better and worse. Better because the main character discovers a deep and unbidden strength within herself that, that helps her to survive some of the most brutal and traumatic experiences. It gets Worse because some of these scenes are very, very difficult to read. Um, in fact, you may find yourself at times having to put the book down because while Octavia E. Butler may not be the most descriptive writer or detailed writer, her prose is illustrative enough that you can almost hear the the wind as the whip beats against these black bodies you can you can hear the screams as these people have to in, endure these slashes across their skin you can you will cry as you witness or hear the stories of dogs rending flesh because these slaves just want freedom could you just imagine if one day you were transported back to the early 1800s to a plantation and had to be a slave in order to survive. And not only so you could survive, but so others could survive, other slaves and even some of those who enslaved you. Because if you fought back, you could possibly cause ripple effects that had unimaginable consequences in the future. So no matter what was done to you, no matter how many lashes you had to take, how much work you had to do in the field, you had to be an obedient slave. Now, that begs the question from all of us. Black, white, other. My black brothers and sisters, if you were one day transported back on time to a slave plantation, consider what, what would you do? Would you just be the obedient slave and do what you needed to do to ensure your survival and the safety of others, including some who may hate and enslave you? Or would you be like Nat Turner? Would you rebel? Would you fight back at the risk of dying or causing unimaginable consequences far into the future? White folks, particularly white men, 
because at some point in this story, um, Dana's husband, Kevin is transported back with her and he has to adopt the role of slave owner. So my, my white brothers, if you were in Kevin's shoes, what would you do? Would you find comfort and peace and just living your life back then as a slave owner? Because, hey, you don't have to worry about being lashed or or working in a field or your children being taken away from you and sold to another slave owner. Or would you be an abolitionist? Would you use your your white privilege to be like the white folks who assisted Harriet Tubman on the underground railroad to house and, and feed, feed the, the fleeing slaves. Think about that. These are the kind of questions this book will have you asking yourself. So how can I rate that? Yes, I could easily give it five, ten, a hundred, a thousand, a million stars, but somehow that simple evaluation system that our us booktubers turn to all the time, including myself, is just not enough to accurately rate how this book truly made me feel and the impact it had on me for the rest of my life. This book is unforgettable, but yet not one I would care to read again anytime soon because it is a difficult one, people. It is one that will have you lying awake at night thinking that if you were just born a couple of hundred years ago, you could possibly be a slave, have been a slave, at least those that look like me. Or for anybody, think of a time period in your group's history. And if you were transported to, to that time and had to endure the same trauma and the same pain, how would you deal with it? How would you handle it? Yeah, I can't give stars to a book like that. There aren't any amount of, there is no rating system that that's available that I could use to accurately convey how I truly feel about Kindred by Octavia E. Butler. And you, and you know what else is crazy? The setting of this book is in the very neighborhood in Maryland that I shop in, that I eat in, and that I literally drive through almost every single day. In fact, my actual neighborhood that I live in was mentioned in the book as a possible escape route for slaves. Now tell me, how can I write a book that hits home like that? I mean, literally hits home. So not only did this book have me asking some very profound questions. Now, when I step out my house and I look at my lawn, I'm in, I'm envisioning just a few hundred years ago, I wouldn't be in this house. I would be working that land. When I go to the local Target and I, I wonder about how many slaves were working these grounds before it was built upon with Targets and Harris Teeters and Petco's. Like this book has literally changed my life. And for me to even try to rate it would not only cheapen, but completely negate the fact that I don't think I ever have nor ever will read anything like it. So that's why I gave Kindred by Octavia 
Butler, no stars because it cannot be rated, at least in my humble opinion. Okay, folks, this is your boy Darko. This has been Kendall's and Kicks. Like, subscribe, comment. I look forward to hearing your thoughts if you've read Kindred. And I encourage everyone who hasn't to read it. I'll see you next time. Peace. Hello. This is Kayla.